DRX are one of the best teams in the world. With a near undefeated record dating all the way back to champs, these guys do not lose. This Pacific juggernaut has pushed top tier teams like Fnatic, Loud, and NRG to their limit and are a force to be feared. So with that being said, how did Team Secret manage to make this giant bleed by taking a series off them with a clean 2-0? By sweeping a Valorant powerhouse in DRX, you join some serious company that only the most dominant teams can be a part of. And they needed this win to stay alive. So how did they do it? Well, in a game like Valorant, sometimes, actually all the time, you need to gamble and take some calculated risks. And like every bet in life, they don't always go your way. But when they do, you win big time. And if you want to play another game where every decision you make is vital, you should check out Enlisted, the sponsor of this video. Enlisted is a new kind of first-person shooter that uniquely couples PvP and PvE combat. You control the squad of customizable AI soldiers and battle with hundreds of targets led by other players. There's a bunch of campaigns to play through, featuring unique pieces from Moscow in 1941 to the Berlin in 1945. Plus, you can play on your favorite console. With over 100 weapons, tanks, and aircrafts, and the endless amounts of customization in their soldiers' classes, it's hard to believe that all of this is free. My favorite part of Enlisted is the crazy realistic sounds and effects. They actually make you feel like you're on a battlefield. So go play Enlisted now for free on any platform. You'll also receive a free bonus pack for registering using my link in the description, including multiple weapons, soldiers, and a premium account. Now let's get back to the breakdown. DRX won the pistol and the buy afterwards, so the pressure is on Team Secret to win this round or risk going down big early. They start in a spread 2-2-1 setup and plan on contesting a lobby control with a breach fault line and Sova playing for information with his dart. If they can manage to keep someone posted on this line, they'll only need one person to hold this entire third of the map fortifying the rest of their hold. Once Breach stuns, he's heading to be with his raise to set up in a nice high-low position to contest mid and fight off anyone peeking into this area. Good plan. But DRX have all their players ready to funnel this way into B. So is Team Secret's plan going to work out? The attackers start the round with this turret on this box, they scale up behind it, and Jet wide swings from bottom mid. She swings so quick that the defense can't land a shot, and DRX explode into their execute. And DRE taking a bit of damage as they go straight in onto B as Buzz new back onto the Jet. He picks up three, and Borkum has to come in to save the team. This was a really nice hit. At the same exact time, Breach flashes as Jet Cloud bursts and updrafts onto top site, and then he flashes again once she's up there to prevent anyone from looking at her. Now, since the defense didn't hit their shots, they never stood a chance. Buzz even gets a third on the rotating Sova who's just come from A. This is a disaster first full buy for Team Secret. Borkum swings through the smoke and gets the trade, but it's no use. He gets put down to 7 HP, and he eventually falls as well. Then Dubstep gets eliminated in a very fitting way. This is not how you want to start off any game, especially one that you need to win. Team Secret get absolutely wiped on the B site. After that nightmare of a full buy, Team Secret are in an eco, and they need to do some damage to DRX. If they don't, their money will spiral out of control, and coming back is going to be much harder. They start in a similar 2-2-1 setup, but this time, Breach isn't heading to B after starting a lobby, but is pushing A instead and forming a strong setup with his Sova. By getting into these risky positions, you have a chance to catch the attackers off guard if they come back later. And if they don't, your other teammates can stack the other sites since you have all of this map control. Now, ideally, you don't really want your support players this far up. They don't have a jet dash or a chamber rendezvous to get themselves out of a sticky situation. But on an eco round, you have to take these types of gambles. Your reward, though, is that your defense is more bolstered. And the jackpot is that you can tear apart the offense if they don't clear you well enough. So let's see how it pays off. Now DRX are also starting in a similar setup, but they know that Team Secret are on a low buy, so they're taking their time so they don't run into a stack or an aggressive push. They start the round by placing this turret that spots all of mid. If this turret doesn't get broken, most of mid control is yours. It stays alive, and DRX takes the space. But back on A, Team Secret have used this timing to form into a deadly bait setup on short. If DRX don't check this, they're screwed. So this one third of the map has a bunch of different angles that are tough to clear out if not dealt with properly. 
I mean, usually they're one and dones, but again, you don't have that great of weapons. You need to take risks, especially when you're off to a bad start like this. So DRX head back to A-Lobby, and down in Sewer, we see Sova baiting for his breach. He's jiggle peeking, he shoots his recon, sends a shock dart at DRX, and even takes a few shots. All the offense sees and hears is Sova, and they're being pulled in by this big bait. Breach is about to hit the jackpot. Able to hit the head as the spray gets him to three health. And now, I mean, he's got some utility out. Envy's gonna pick up two as he's on three health. This time, Jesse Vaughn's not. Breach almost got spammed out of this spot. And with three HP left, he takes down two important kills. Jesse Vash swings to help him out, but he goes down. But it's too late. DRX have no choice but to push into A with 30 seconds left. Envy stuns the lane into sight, and his Killjoy sits down stacks. But RB, who was planted in mid at the start of the round, has found an insane timing into B site. To advantage as barely Buzz is going to pick up that spike. There's just not really enough time. He would have to run straight into B right now. And he's just going to get shot down. That's going to do a team secret. He only manages to get one, and because time is so low, Buzz can't rotate and get to mid in time. But because of this risky playmaking from both Breach and Sova, their payout was to put their team in a much better position. Team Secret managed to pull out another round thanks again to Breach and his nice 2k in Garage. But this time, the defense aren't the ones who are gambling. You'll see. DRX start this round with all five players grouped up outside of C Long, and that's where they're headed. And that's okay, because Team Secret are playing retake on this site. Instead, they have four players fighting for this A lobby control and plan on using Breach's Rolling Thunder to retake C. The round starts with DRX scaling up C Long behind their OWL drone. They Breach Flash, Jet Dash, and take the site. But take a look at how little utility they're using. They're betting that because the OWL drone didn't spot anyone, and that they face zero resistance taking the site, and that Team Secret have their Breach ult, that they're playing retake and that they could save their utility to fight off against Team Secret's strong retake. This is why they only used a flash to take the site. And based off all that info, this is a smart gamble to take. But Team Secret aren't letting DRX off the hook that easy. Because Sova's arrow never got shot in A lobby, Breach saved his stun and instead uses it to punish the plant with Sova's ultimate. Stax goes down, but Zest trades the flank, and Buzz gets a kill and spawn with his judge that he bought since he had knives online this round. This puts us in a 3 versus 4, but Team Secret still have their main win condition, the Rolling Thunder. The remaining defenders get into position and start their retake. Now you got a big question as Envy. Do you invest this Rolling Thunder to try to make this retake go? Yep, they're going to go for it. They've got Buzz pinned in the back. See if it works for them as the Paranoia comes out. The knife's not going to connect, and it's up to Zest and RB on the back of the... Team Secret have taken the site, but now we see DRX make a riskier decision. They play long for spam. Now, a good rule of thumb or protocol to have in Valorant is that if the enemy controller is still alive, you should play more up on site. Because they can smoke the spike and prevent you from knowing for sure whether or not they're still defusing, playing for spam becomes much more dangerous of a game plan. I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it can work, but you're taking a lot less favorable gamble. Now, if the controller isn't alive, then your odds of successfully playing for spam are much higher since you can easily tell if the enemy is still defusing. Also, these percentages can vary on whether or not you have good guns, if you have utility, where the spike is positioned, and other factors. But in general, if you plan to spam against smokes, you are leaving it up to chance. So that means DRX's decision to have two people go long to spray the spike instead of flooding back in and fighting after the breach ult is a bit risky. So let's see how it plays out. He is holding it, but the spray comes down. And RB knows exactly where to spray, but Borkum, second half, he's gonna hold it, and he will pick up the round, and a clutch for the side of Team C. Now, Sova did have a crazy double shock dart lineup for the spike, but like I said, anything past that is all up to RNG. If the controller is still alive, it can be a losing bet to resort to spam. Both teams are making great reads, and it is a close game after starting 0-3. But if DRX drops this one, they'll be forced onto a really bad buy. So this round, they're focusing more towards a lobby control. They're in a 1-4 setup, with Killjoy holding mid with her turret. Now, Team Secret aren't giving the space up for free. They also have four people here, ready to brawl for a lobby. Like I said before, a lobby is just so important for both attackers and defenders. If the attackers can gain this map control, the defense is forced to spread their players out more thin, or end up leaving a site open to play retake. 
But if the defense have this map control, they can leave one person to cover both lanes leading into A site. Then their teammates are going to be stacked on the other parts of the map and have a lot easier time responding to the offense. This is why it's so important that you have at least something contesting this part of the map. Whether it's a smoke or a cage to deny info, a drone to push someone back, you just need something to at least attempt to make the defense rotate over. But Team Secret aren't fighting for it. They're bluffing. Their real game plan is to show heavy pressure on A, back off, and then play the retake with their Killjoy lockdown. By showing heavy pressure early like this, they're hoping that DRX goes all in and uses a lot of utility to take the site and then have none to stop the retake. So you see the defense start the round with a breach fault line and silver recon for lobby, and Jeremy walks into sewer with his op. The offense responds by cloud bursting short and smoking long. Ray spots Silva with her op, but she can't get the kill. Ray's immediately backs off and concedes a lobby to the offense. But before they leave, they feel like they haven't created enough pressure. So to top off all this fake aggression, Omen rips his paranoia. Then you see the defense rotate off site. But will DRX bite and expect people here? They scale up long and even get blocked off by a smoke and dodge a Silva shock. But they aren't falling for it. Why not? Well, they're taking the risk that because they have Breach's Rolling Thunder, that the defense wouldn't be foolish enough to contest the site, especially since they have a Killjoy lockdown. The sheer pressure being made from these two ults just existing gives enough confidence to DRX to make an educated gamble. So despite all the aggression that Team Secret just showed, the most likely play is that the defense is playing retake. With this read, they only commit Sova's arrow and a Breach Flash. And their read is right except that they go too fast and get sat down by Rage's op. They're now down a player, but they were correct. The site was open, and they accurately predicted Team Secret's bluff. But now, it's time for the retake. Down, and now Aftershock coming through. He's going to take down the defenders one, and that means that DRX can stand the site as Jeremy and Borkum pick up a couple. They're desperately trying to get in here. They're running out of time, but Dubs Both teams trade lockdown for lockdown, but the offense used their Aftershock and a Killjoy Nano to cancel out Team Secret's. Now the defense knows that they have to go fast, but if they come out of spawn, they're going to get rocked by Breach's utility. So they have no choice but to fly out of heaven with this smoke and a Breach Flash. But look closely, while all that was going on, Omen used his teammates as a distraction to teleport out behind the enemies, break the lockdown, and turn this round into a 2 versus 2. And his teammate Dubstep didn't think he was going to break it in time, so she's rushing back from B and catches Mako off guard. The defense now knows that the last person is in short, and it all comes down to Zest. They have a decent idea, but no, he's gonna poke out and Dubstep takes him down. And Team Secret gonna get their fourth round in a row. Zest had a small window in their spacing, but couldn't capitalize. Now I'll be honest with you guys, what we're watching is Valorant being played at its highest level. Team Secret was able to convert against the half by last round, and after an 0-3 start, this is looking really good if you're a Secret fan. Now they're hoping to keep the momentum building by contesting a lobby with Breach, Sova, and Rays, and both anchors on C. And their plan is the same as last time. Show heavy pressure on A and try to make DRX use their Breach ult. It's so crazy how just the simple fact that DRX has it online is influencing Team Secret's game plan so much. And DRX smell the fear. This hostage situation that DRX has created with this Rolling Thunder is really hard to deal with if you're Team Secret. They just have no idea when it's finally going to go off. So, both teams start the round similar as last. DRX cloudbursts the cross to deny information, airs into short, and smokes long. Team Secret fault line lobby, recons inside, and this utility battle ends up with them once again giving up A site in fear of this rolling thunder. They have no idea when DRX are going to use it, so they're forced to gamble. Because if they get caught in it, they're going to die and then lose the round. This is a tough situation to be in. But now that they just lost all of A, Sova decides to join out mid to gain some form of read on the offense. He spots Killjoy, and now you see them trying to get her out. A recon dart, shock dart, and breach starts spamming the turret through the door, but Killjoy shoots back. With all that commotion going on in mid, DRX has scaled up A site. And just like last round, they use nothing more than a breach flash and jet dash to take the site. I mean, seriously, when are they going to use this thing? Team Secret are forced to retake, but here we see a very risky play. So, most of the time in Valorant, you want to play with proper fundamentals. And by fundamentals, I mean playing crossfires, having good spacing to trade your teammates, and that sort of thing. What this normalized behavior does is make aggressive plays like these more unpredictable and sometimes successful. 
But if your all-in play doesn't work out, you kind of look like an idiot. Now, before this retake even has a chance to start, Buzz swings into defender spawn and takes down three players. His big-time play paid off huge, and he cashes out with a crucial round win for DRX. And I don't know if they're ever going to use that breach ult. Team Secret are going to have to adjust, and Just quick. Like last time, so DRX finally get back on the board. Now, Team Secret are tired of being held hostage by this breach ult. They aren't showing this thing any more respect and are starting in a 3-2 spread. The defense this time is committing to this A-lobby fight and are going to force out that Rolling Thunder, and DRX are headed straight for them. Secret start the round with another stun arrow combo, but this time, Sova gets into the smoke. His raise is about to peek from short with an op, and his breach is coming over to help them fight. As soon as he gets there, it's going to hit the fan. Smoke, baby. Try to see if you get a pick. Jeremy there, not able to find a connection. Oh, the timing was pretty good with the flash. Raze couldn't hit the shot, and DRX turned the breach flash. This lobby aggression has backfired, and Team Secret are forced to retreat. But DRX still haven't used their breach ult yet, so the defense commits to the side anchor, risking the fact that DRX could ult them this round. But they can't be afraid of this thing forever, and they need to bait it out. So the attackers slowly scale up a long and get into position. This isn't looking good for Team Secret. Just waiting. Off your feet. Well, now you're gonna use that rolling thunder to try to get in. Jeremy, though, unaccounted for, gets the kill. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> He's gonna win in the shorty war as... DRX finally used their breach ult, and it demolished the site hold. The defense bet wrong, and they got punished. But DRX aren't taking the site. They think that because they created so much commotion on A, that surely the two remaining players are both there, right? Wrong. Because as soon as the breach ult went off, you see Killjoy move up C long to take this space. Now, normally as a side anchor, you want to be playing off your utility and making sure you can stall a push. But when you notice that you can take space or create a timing somewhere on the map, your utility is no longer the win condition. You are. And to be honest, Kildra has zero chance to win this round if she just stuck around on site or rotated through spawn with her omen. Those are too safe a place to make when you're down numbers like this. And lucky for dubstep, DRX are rotating out and are headed right his way. Get the jump onto DRX as that's one, make it two, but only two. As now the plank comes in, Borkum's on the chase. He gets two and gives his omen a chance to win the round. Omen heard DRX rotating out, so he followed behind them, swings from lobby, and just barely misses the attackers, but he knows where they're going. He sprints towards C, gets tagged by the alarm bot, and DRX know his exact location. They plant for back sight, but this isn't over. Omen decides to smoke mid sight, teleports in it to scramble his position, and the clutch attempt begins. But this is gonna be rough. I mean, they've got a planet on the other side. There's a turret there with the killjoy available. Cover going up. Octa's just gonna wait. Oh, gets the jump on him though, sees the angle. Omen turns it into a one versus one, and with the spike planted back sight, he knows exactly what's going on. Well, RB's been clutch as heck this year. One of the best in VCT Pacific, if not the best overall. Gonna clear that nano, let's see if he can get it done. Well, he's gonna get half once again. He holds it as in with the sword, but he can't get it. Borkum backs off. Omen got the spike to half, and RB couldn't risk it. He had to check. But with some fantastic decision making coming from Team Secret, they put themselves in a great spot to close out the half. So, I was gonna cover last round, but it was decided in less than five seconds. No, literally. Watch. Out on their trail. Here's he does his own teleport to his smoke. He hears Mako's teleport as well. Oh my uh, god, Jeremy. What? Team Secret were tired of giving up this A lobby control and gambled that since DRX have always started here and have found free map control, odds are they do it again. This was a great punish. Now after getting railed on A, DRX are going for a C pop this round. And Team Secret know that DRX aren't going A again, so they try to punish in mid with a fault line paint shells combo for Hay Bale. The round starts with a god dart from Sova, but Borkum hears them sprinting up sight. He sends his paranoia to slow them down and then gets off. But since they were in mid, all of Team Secret are here to flood back into the site. Now once the Sova arrow fades away, Breach flashes into sight and goes down. And then Jeremy tries to trade, 
but he falls too. The spacing and timing just wasn't there. But here we get to see Secret go for a high risk, high reward play. They just lost all their explosive power for this retake, so the remaining players have to make a play. Borkum decides to smoke mid sight and teleports into it. This poor man's jet dash forces the enemies to either spray your smoke or ignore it completely and shoot whoever comes out. Again, a play like this isn't ideal and it is a risky play. But when you're down like this, sometimes it's your only option. A couple of kills here for DRX as they are trying to take down that lockdown in the smoke. Borkum and Dubsip get two apiece. This risky play has paid off big time. Owen and Killjoy played off each other's pressure beautifully and end up securing an 8 4 scoreline headed into the second half. Okay, so I really only do one half of games because I simply don't have the time to cover full games, but this round just fit too well and it was too cool not to show. So consider this a bonus round. It's the second half and DRX have made this a close game. Now especially with Team Secret on a Nico and two Buckies on attack, this should be a freebie. DRX's plan is simple. Have Sova get Jet on the line and get an early kill with her op before backing off and have Breach start B to stun for anyone and anywhere. But Team Secret are slamming B site fast. They have two Buckies, a Frenzy, and a Dream. And this is a strategy we don't see used often enough. Normally when teams go B, they plant the spike, play off, and fall back to mid to spam the spike. But if you look at how this site is laid out, it is very close quarters. This means you can take the enemy off guard and get up in their grill with these close range weapons. This now gives you a solid win condition despite having bad weapons. So they start their push with a shock lineup to clear any killjoy utility, raise sprints from hay bale, and Roomba's up. They nade an aftershock back sight, and Ray's heads straight for the ceiling smoke. Stax tries to deny the plant with his own aftershock, but if he isn't careful about this smoke, he's going to throw the round. As Jeremy's really upping the tempo here, let's see if he... Okay, well that's gonna be one second click get some damage. Oh! He is hunting them down! He ends up dying in the smoke, and RB was mid-reload. Ray's heard him and satcheled his way before he could even adjust. Now, if you remember correctly, the Bucky right click got nerfed, but not the left click. These shotguns have created a 5 versus 3, and Team Secret now have full ceiling control. Killjoy is also holding the entirety of flank, and Sova with a Bucky of his own is holding down a Link. Sova decides to play a bit of Fortnite with his counterpart, they collapse on the C-Link player, and this freebie round that DRX thought they had just got ruined. And by two Buckies. This entire game was full of calculated decision making, solid game plans, and this is what Valorant looks like when embraced and played at the highest level. Thanks for recommending this game to me guys. This one was really fun to break down. Now before I go guys, be sure to play Enlisted for free right now using my link in the description. If you're looking for a war game that actually makes you feel like you're immersed, Enlisted is exactly what you're looking for. I mean, it costs you nothing. Why not give it a try?